If you've ever read any reports about any game's development, you'll know how in flux everything is until the last minute. It's the kind of environment that led to a whole rewrite of Destiny's story when the studio was only half a year from release. So it's no surprise that even the very best video game stories don't always tie everything up in the neatest of ways. Especially when developers are tasked with telling a cohesive narrative over an entire series, plot threads are likely to be introduced that never come into play in the major ways fans expected them to, or whole characters are just dropped because they're no longer relevant to a story's new direction. And don't get me wrong, that doesn't make these games on this list bad, and it sometimes doesn't even make the story itself weaker, but it can still be baffling to look back at some releases and identify major plot points that went absolutely nowhere. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 8 video game plot points the developers abandoned. Number 8. Everything in Manhattan – Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty the ending of Metal Gear Solid 2 isn't really supposed to be taken at face value. After all, the final levels have you running naked around a surreal hangar being chased by ninjas before you confront an AI who tells you to turn off the game, which you respond to by massacring hundreds of goons alongside Solid Snake, who proudly claims that his bandana gives him infinite ammo. Yeah, yeah, I know, that sounds like a regular Saturday night in Newcastle, but there is one plot tidbit that seems pretty straightforward in all of this mess, and that's when Liquid Ocelot takes off with a Metal Gear in pursuit of the Patriots, and Snake swears to track him down and continue the fight, a cliffhanger for a sequel that wouldn't happen for another seven years. Sadly, even when that sequel did ship, the events of what happened immediately after MGS2 are never really addressed. Yes, we know Snake and Raiden tracked down Olga's daughter, but we don't know what happened with Liquid. Even worse, the surreal feeling of the original ending is never explained either, and it's unclear how Raiden's fiancée Rose ended up in the middle of Manhattan with him, or how much she really knew about his mission, or where Snake disappeared to. Why? Well, because there was never supposed to be a sequel, and Hideo Kojima's decision to discard these abstract elements in MGS4 makes that fact abundantly clear. Number 7. The Significance of the Sires – Gears of War 2 While Gears of War hasn't always had the best storytelling chops, its rich mythology has provided a detailed sci-fi world for players to pick apart. There's a real history to the Locust-Human War that was slowly fleshed out across the first three titles, as well as the spin-off books and comics that probably only Ben Roy from our office has ever read. But there is one lingering thread that has never been addressed, just what the hell happened to those mutated sires from Gears 2? In that sequel's final stages, you fight your way through an old abandoned research lab where you're treated to an action scene against these new enemies. They're humanoid, but look neither human, locust, nor lambent, and the suggestion is that these creatures were essentially the progenitors of the locust swarm. They were once humans mutated by emulsion, experimented on by scientists along with their children. These monsters were seen by the scientists as humanity's bridge to the next stage of evolution, and through their attempts to play a god, could have spawned the locust drones that raged war against humans years later. The reason their origin is so wishy-washy though is that after Gears 2, they were dropped entirely, and while they were allegedly originally going to be explored much more in the third game, they failed to show up in that release and Gears 4. Number 6. The Cliffhanger Ending – Call of Duty Ghosts Though they're easily written off as brainless trash, even the very worst Call of Duty games have enjoyed compelling enough stories. In fact, it was probably one of the only redeeming factors of Ghosts, one of the least beloved entries in Activision's entire series. Taking place in an almost apocalyptic setting after the Middle East is wiped out by nuclear weapons, the player controls hardman Logan Walker as he joins the Ghosts, an elite legendary spec ops unit. Their goal, as is always the case in Call of Duty games, is to take down terrorist and all-around bad dude Gabriel Rock, who used to lead the Ghosts team himself, but was captured by the enemy and subjected to intense torture and pumped with hallucinogenics. However, after a final fight where you seemingly take Rock down and save the day, he ambushes you and drags you off into the jungle, where he promises to put you through the same torture and brainwash you to join the other side and fight the same people you just almost died protecting. 
the game ends on this tantalizing cliffhanger ready for a sequel to pick it up. However, since the original Modern Warfare games, Infinity Ward has failed to get another sub-series off the ground, and after the disappointing ghosts, they were moved on to creating the futuristic Infinite Warfare, and now they're back rebooting Modern Warfare. But still, it's not like that would have stopped them entirely from at least referencing the events of Ghosts. But alas, they decided to sweep it all under the rug. Number 5. Galactus's Invasion – Marvel Ultimate Alliance Now, nobody is expecting comic book games, especially ones released by Activision in the mid-2000s, to have a great plot that spans a bunch of releases. But it still sucks when a cliffhanger is teased and then completely disregarded in a sequel. Sadly, that is exactly what happened with Marvel Ultimate Alliance, as the original title's adventure to stop Doctor Doom ended on the impending invasion of Galactus, who, by the way, you actually fought earlier in the game, en route to eat Earth. It would have provided a ridiculous starting point for a sequel, but alas, the second game went down a decidedly less cosmic route, instead choosing to adapt the Civil War storyline. While that could have been a cool concept and divided up the roster in a pretty interesting way, it wasn't exactly well executed, nor was the rest of the sequel in fact, and left everyone to dream about what the original plan for the second title could have been. In the end though, players just kind of had to assume that the Marvel heroes kicked Galactus's ass off screen. Number 4. Dark Energy and the Human Reaper – Mass Effect 2 Wherever you fall on the resolution of the Mass Effect series, it's been readily documented that there was a pretty major shift in the writing between the second and the third game. One of the two lead writers, Drew Capition, left the franchise, leaving other writer Mac Walters to tie up all the loose ends. This resulted in the writer throwing away a bunch of plot points that were teased in the first two releases and which were supposed to take precedent in the third. The biggest of these was the idea of Dark Energy being the motivation for the Reaper's extinction event. Originally, Biotics being able to wield Dark Energy was what triggered the Reaper's returning, as messing with that part of the natural order could have changed the fabric of time and space itself. This was dropped entirely though in the third game, with it being the emergence of AI and the war between species and their robotic creations that was the eventual reason why the Reapers reset the galaxy. But that ain't the only thing that was dropped from the sequel, as the Human Reaper, the final boss from Mass Effect 2, was similarly swept under the rug. The implication here was that the Reaper ships took the form of harvested species with each new cycle, but when ME3 came around, they all just adopted the classic squid style. Admittedly, dropping this plot point was probably for the best. Number 3. Ethan's Incriminating Behavior – Heavy Rain Though it's still full of David Cageisms and goes down some completely preposterous routes, Heavy Rain is probably Quantic Dream's most accessible and tightly woven game. The story, all about the search for the origami killer, as told through the perspectives of a bunch of different characters, is genuinely gripping, as players are tasked to unravel just who the criminal is. Of course, Cage and his team didn't want to make it too obvious, and sprinkled in a bunch of red herrings to throw players off the scent. The biggest one surrounded Ethan, a father whose son has been kidnapped by the killer and whose tragic backstory heavily hints at the kind of psychological break that could send him down a murderous path. Arousing even more suspicion, the game also depicts Ethan having blackouts around the time the origami killer strikes, even showing him waking back up holding an origami figure. The thing is, even when the killer is actually discovered, Ethan's strange behaviour is never explained. Deleted scenes do shed more light on the issue, but the final game never bothers to explain why Ethan was so damn shady. Number 2. Subject 16's Cryptic Warning – Assassin's Creed Brotherhood Assassin's Creed's convoluted mythology makes Metal Gear Solid's look like a simple Mr. Men book, because while the latter's story is long, complicated and winding, Kojima at least attempted to wrap up a bunch of lingering plot threads and holes with MGS4 at least to the best of his ability. Assassin's Creed's story got so unwieldy though that most of it was brushed aside after the third game, including Subject 16's warning that finding Eve, as in, you know, Adam and Eve, would be essential in humanity's survival. Subject 16 was another descendant of Assassin's Creed hero Ezio, showing up first in Brotherhood's secret truth videos with orders for Desmond to track down Eve for a… mysterious reason, I don't know. When he showed up again in Revelations though, the story was entirely about finding the Apple of Eden, and Eve's significance was no longer mentioned. 
With Subject 16 sacrificing himself at the end of that game, spoilers, sorry, the importance of finding the religious icon died along with him. Number 1. Quincy Sharp's Spirit of Arkham, Arkham Asylum while it often gets overlooked, one tragic casualty of the Arkham series as it grew was losing the gothic supernatural influences that made the original so distinct. Though it was still rooted in real-world technology, there was an undeniable fantastical aura about it, primarily in the subplot regarding the so-called Spirit of Arkham. By finding a bunch of hidden artifacts in the game, you can uncover the story of Amadeus Arkham, and how he built the psychiatric facility, and how his view of his patients grew over time. It's essentially set up as a haunting tale for whoever is brave enough to find all of the entries, and it ends on a stunning twist. After the final artifact is found, it's revealed that Quincy Sharp, the warden of the asylum in the present day, houses the spirit of Arkham inside him. Or at least, that's what he thinks, and this sinister alter ego encourages him to kill the insane patients, believing that death is the only cure. There is still some doubt about the validity of this though, as Sharp was diagnosed as having a personality disorder, and this serial killer side could have just been a manifestation of that. But the resolution of this thread does suggest that supernatural things are afoot. Sadly, this was never really followed up on, and Sharp plays more of a background role in future titles, as the tone shifted to be more focused on gadgets and technology than the gothic supernatural implications of this substory. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are there any other plot threads that were just completely dropped in games or their sequels that I missed off here? And while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.